Today I'm going to be talking about possibly the most classic and iconic rule in all of calculus, the power rule, which just tells you that the derivative of the function x to the power of n is n times x to the power of n minus 1. Everyone's learned it, so you know, let's do some practice. What's the derivative of x squared? It's going to be 2x. What's the derivative of x to the power of 5? It's going to be 5x to the power of 4. This, this is one of the first rules that calculus students ever learn, but most people just learn the rule and they never actually learn where it comes from and how to prove it and why this actually holds. Why is this really the derivative of the function x to the power of n? Because we all know that you know for a function, for a function f of x, its derivative is going to be you know the f prime of x at the point x is going to be the limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. This is the definition of the derivative of any function. You know, just it's two points on a tangent line getting infinitely close to each other. Um, it gives you the slope of the function at that point. So why is this really the answer to, the, to this limit when our function is x to the power of n? There's a lot, there's a lot of ways to prove this, you know. Um, uh, you can also use some like uh, binomial series and power series, but we're gonna prove it the most simple way using elementary, elementary calculus kind of uh, elementary analysis methods. So we have to solve this limit, our function, we're going to have to solve the limit as h goes to 0 of x to the power of, um, well, here I, I'm, I'm not going to call the function um, n, but I, I'm going to use the word alpha. So I'll have x plus h to the power of alpha minus, just alpha instead of n, because I have it like this in my notes. So x plus h to the power of alpha minus x to the power of alpha over h. That is the limit that we're going to be trying to solve. And let's focus on the first part at the top over here. So we have x plus h to the power of alpha minus x alpha. Well, what I can do is, first of all, I can take x out of this expression to get x1 plus h over x and all this to the power of alpha minus x to the power of alpha. And now, obviously, I can distribute alpha to both sides. I can do this. If another thing we have to talk about is if alpha is any real number. So if we're talking about any real exponent, then this value x has to be positive. But if alpha has to be, um, if alpha is is just a natural number, like one, two, three. If we never have like you know irrational powers, like you know if we never have decimal powers like two point two or like you know pi, um, then x can be also a, a a negative number. So that's just something that you have to take into account. But basically, I can distribute alpha now, so I can get x alpha times. 1 plus h over x to the power of alpha minus x alpha. And now, obviously, I can factor x alpha out of this expression to get 1 plus h over x minus 1. You know, and I just put alpha back here and back here. So now I can plug that into the limit. We're going to notice that x to the power of alpha, well, there's no h in here. So this is just a constant, and we can take it out of the limit. So I can put x to the power of alpha out. And then I have the limit as h goes to 0 of what we're left with, which is 1 plus h over x to the power of alpha minus 1 over h. And what we're going to do now is we're going to introduce a substitution. This value over here, h over x, we're going to call that y. We're going to see y equals h over x. And now we also have to change this sign if we want to if you want to introduce a substitution. But we can see that as h goes to 0, y also goes to 0. So they are connected. So indeed, I can just change that. So what I'm going to have now is x to the power of alpha times the limit as y goes to 0 of 1 plus y to the power of alpha minus 1 over, or what is h now? h just becomes y times x, so over y times x. And, you know, multiply by x, that's the same thing as saying times 1 over x. Or, you know, if I take it out of the expression, I'm going to get x alpha over x, which is just the same thing as x alpha times x to the minus 1, which is just the same thing as x to the power of alpha minus 1. So we can see our limit is already getting somewhere. So if I... If I um, rewrite this now, taking the x out, I'm going to get equals the limit of x alpha minus 1 times the limit as y goes to 0. Of, all we're left with is y now, 1 plus y to the power of alpha minus 1 over y. And we can see this is already a good sign. This is already looking like our derivative. The only thing we're still missing is alpha. So this limit over here has to equate to alpha because if it does, then our function x to the power of alpha, well, its derivative, which is, you know, shown over here, is just going to be alpha times x alpha minus 1, and boom, we are done. However, this limit, you can see, is slightly tricky because, again, if I just plug in y equals 0, I'm going to get 1 to the power of alpha minus 1 over 0. You can't even divide by 0. This is undefined, so, you know, it is a slightly tricky limit, and it's not at all obvious that this is going to equate to alpha. So, for, for, for the remaining of the video, we're just going to be proving why this limit really equates to alpha. 
in the you know proper r rigorous way. So first of all, um, I'm just gonna focus on this part over here, one plus y to the power of alpha. We're just gonna we're gonna focus on this part because it's kind of you know it's the weirdest part. First of all, whenever we have an exponent, for example, like um, a to the power of alpha, we usually rewrite it as e times alpha ln a to because it's easier to, to, to work with. And whenever you have things like you know alpha times ln a, you know the, the property of logarithms is you can take this to the power. So this is the same thing as ln a times a to the power of alpha. So you can drop down the power and multiply by, by everything. And then you know what we're going to be left with um, is going to be e times e to the power of ln a alpha and e and ln just cross each other out so you know these two things really are the, these two things really are the same statement so now uh, so we, we we're gonna change this into e times alpha ln 1 plus y because you know that, that is our a and now we're gonna try to do our first little approximation I'm saying that ln 1 plus y uh, oh my god I have to write this a bit better I'm saying that ln 1 plus y is the same thing as y plus small o of y, where the small o of y is an error term. And this, you have to state, this is true as y goes to zero. What I'm saying right now is, I'm approximating this function, ln 1 plus y, as y goes to zero, as just a straight line plus a small error term. And a property of this error term is going to be that, oy, this is just a term that goes to zero way faster than y goes to zero. So the, you know, the fraction oy over y, goes to zero as y goes to zero. So they're both going to zero, but for example, you know, when y is 0 0.1, oy is already 0 0.00001, you know? This is the same thing as saying, let's say, you know, one over one million. So obviously this, so this, this part over here is gonna go to zero way faster than this part. That is a property. This is true if the function is, is differentiable at the point zero. And we're gonna kinda, I'm just gonna build the intuition to this. I don't wanna really exactly say what, why this is true but you know if we have a function f of x equals ln 1 plus x well then f of 0 is just going to be ln of 1 which equals 0 so our function this ln 1 plus y at 0 equals 0 and then it's derivative the the derivative at the point 0 of ln 1 plus y well that's just going to equate to 1 and again this also isn't at all obvious there is a way to kind of prove it uh, I did the proof here, but I'm not going to really talk about it. But you know, you again, you take limit as h goes to zero of ln you know, 1 plus h minus ln 1 over h, and you equate this limit and you get and you get this over here. And you can use the, 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 the squeeze theorem to approximate ln 1 plus y. I showed it over here. It's going to be you know, ln 1 plus um, 1 plus y is in blue, and you know, it's between these two functions. And both of these functions have a limit which goes to one. So by the squeeze theorem, this function over here also has to go to one. So this is kind of how we show that. Um, this uh, the the derivative of ln of ln one plus y is also equal to one. So now we have a function which at zero equals zero and its slope is going to be one. Well, that is awfully similar to a straight line because a straight line also crosses zero and always has a slope of one. And what I'm basically saying is this function exactly equals a straight line plus a small error term. However, the small error term goes to zero as y goes to zero. So the function exactly equals a straight line. And you know we can see the intuition over here. Uh, if I just plot ln 1 plus x and x, you know, as we see, you know, the error term is going to be this line over here. So here, you know, the error is bigger, bigger, smaller, 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 smaller. And, you know, we can see that the error term goes to zero and that, you know, the, there is no difference between the straight line and ln 1 plus y, you know, at the point zero. So they really are the same thing. And the property of the derivative, because it's differentiable, I know that this term, oy, goes to zero faster than anything else. So x is also going to zero. You know, x will be our value here going to zero. However, this error term is going to is gonna go to zero way faster. You know, x is still, for example, here 0 0.02, and you know our error term is basically gone already. So this is what I mean when I say O y over y goes to zero as y goes to zero, as y goes to zero. So basically you have to keep this in mind. This is kind of a powerful tool in you know in, in real analysis, which you can use to, to, to solve a problem. You know, it's called the small o notation. Um, so basically what I'm saying now is that this I'm going to say just equals e alpha times, well, we said that ln 1 plus y equals y plus oy. And now we are ready to do our second approximation because this again, what is e to the power of, of let's see, I'm just going to say t, you know, e to the power of t, I'm saying is, oh, what I'm saying is that I can also approximate this expression as equal to 1 plus t plus ot. And again, where is the intuition to that? Well, first of all, I'm just going to plot it. I'm going to plot e to the power of x 
and then I'm gonna plot one plus x. Oh yeah, I'm zoomed in way too much. This is our function to power of x, this is our line one plus x. We can see that at the point one, they are basically the same thing. Again, they have the same slope, they have the same the, the same value at the point x equals zero, and because e to the x is differentiable at this point, this value over here, so ot, ot over here is really gonna go to zero faster than any than any other value. So again, I can say that ot over t goes to zero as t goes to zero. Um, and you know you can see really it's the same thing. We have one plus t now because we have a straight line. We have a straight line t, but we have to shift it by one up so that you know it really approximates the t function at the point y equals zero. So again, our value t in this case is going to be alpha y plus o y. So our function, you know, e to the t. Well, I'm just going to say that this over here equals e. Um, I mean equals one plus our value t, which is this. So one plus alpha y plus o y plus small of y plus o t. And again, what is o t? O t is just all of this, you know, o, o t is just going to equal o of alpha y plus alpha o y. Then again, a thing about small o, about small o uh, notation, this over here is just going to be o alpha y. And if o y goes to zero, then multiplying it by constant won't save anything. So alpha O y is just the same thing as O y, and here we're gonna have double O. If we you know put this over here, we're gonna have alpha O of O y, and that goes to zero even faster. So O t is just the same thing as O y, and here so we're basically gonna have O y plus O y, and adding two O y terms also. You know if it goes to zero, if you add another term to it, it's still gonna go to zero. So we can actually neglect O t and just keep O y. It is the same thing. It takes a while to get used to this, but it's pretty it's pretty powerful once you actually learn how. <laughs> once you actually learn how it works. So now, what we're left with is one plus alpha y plus o y. Because again, alpha o y is the same thing as o y, so I'm not even d d distributing the alpha over here. So now, what have we done? We started with our function, um, we started with our function uh, one plus y to the power of alpha, and we said that this equals to one plus alpha y plus o y, as y goes to zero. This is only true as y goes to zero. And now we can plug that back into our limit. So we had our limit over here. We can change, we alter this value, and now we can plug it back in because again, we are taking the limit as y goes to zero, so we can use the small notation. This is indeed valid. So I'm gonna plug it back in and we're gonna have the limit as y goes to zero of one plus alpha y plus o y minus one over y. This is the same thing, and I'm just checking one more time, yeah. So this, and then minus one over y. So it is indeed the same thing. Oh, and I forget to, I forgot to copy in the term. I mean, now we're just focusing on the limit, so I, I'm neglecting this term over here. We just want to see what the limit equates to. So if I go back now, I can see that one and minus one cancel. So I'm left with the limit as y goes to zero of alpha y plus o y over y. And again, I can divide y by both sides, so what I'm going to be left with is the limit as y goes to zero of alpha y over y. That's just um, that's just alpha um, alpha plus o y over y. And again, I can split this limit on in, in, into both into both um, the parentheses if the limit exists. And again, the limit as y goes to zero of alpha. Well, that's just going to be alpha. And the limit as y goes to zero of o y over y. Well, that's what we were talking about the whole time. For small small notation, if you have o something over over that something, as that something goes to zero, that limit is just going to be equal to zero. We showed it, you know, how we, with how infinitely close they get. The error term, the error term goes to zero way faster than the actual value goes to zero. So this is just going to be equal to. Um, well, the limit doesn't apply to alpha, so it's just going to be equal to alpha plus the limit as y goes to zero of o y over y, and that just equals zero. So our limit is gonna be alpha, and bang, we just showed it. This limit really does equate to alpha. So if we go back to our derivative over here, we got that, I'm gonna make some space here, we got that this equals x to the power of alpha minus one times alpha, you know, usually alpha is written here, and that is our derivative. Our derivative of a function x to the power of alpha equals alpha x to the power of alpha minus one. We just we just proved it, you know, using the, fundal using the fundamental definition of the derivative. 
um, and we didn't use any really fancy math. We just used approximations, which you know you can see really make sense when you look at them. They ln one plus x and x equal each other at the point zero, and uh, e to the x and one plus x basically equal each other at the point x equals zero. This is how we solve the problem using kind of a fundamentally fundamental analysis tools. I hope you enjoyed, and now you can finally understand how this rule works and um, where it actually comes from when you use it in your day-to-day -day life. Thank you for watching.